grateful, O oh God, for dying for us. We are grateful, O oh God, for conquering death and devil and rising up again to show us that you have the power, that death could not even hold you bound. We thank you, God, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, O oh God, for loving us in spite of ourselves. We worship you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you accept our worship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated, please. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone. I didn't hear anybody's excitement. Am I the only one excited today? Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. This is... This is the reason why we are Christians. I hope we all know that. So as we are here, enjoying the reason why we are Christians, enjoying the love of Christ. Let us remember those that are in the communities who do not know that they have this. At this time, we ask that everyone give a dollar because we hope everyone can participate in this blessing and give a dollar. But if you do not have a dollar, you can give a prayer. A prayer can go far, far more than a dollar can go or whatever amount. And anything you have to give, if it's more than a dollar, we will gladly accept that too. So if you're ready, if you can please lift up your offering and just say whatever it is in your hands. I will say a dollar because this is a dollar seed offering and you just say what you have. If you can please repeat after me, this is my dollar. I give it to the poor. When I give to the poor, I lend to the Lord. And the Lord will repay me. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Well, we will still rejoice. Jesus has risen. Abina.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I think we'll just worship first. Let's just be in the mood of worship and bless the name of the Lord. Can we just wave your hands unto him? If you know that you're alive today, you're here today because of Jesus. If you know that, I know that I, I am, I, I don't want to say I'm lucky, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have Jesus in my life. If you know that the love that the Lord has for you, he loves you more than anything. And he sent his holy begotten son so that me and you, we can have eternal life. Come and worship him. Worship him this morning. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Exalt his holy name. Say, Father, I thank you. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I give you praise. I exalt your majesty. Thank you, Jesus. How can I describe a love that's indescribable? How can you describe the love of the Father for you? How can I explain a love that's unexplainable? I'm lost for words. the song the same how can I describe how can you describe the love of the father a love that in the scribe say how can I explain how can I explain a love that's unexplainable and love that's on I'm lost for what everybody say. Oh, oh, my heart, my heart sings so. Oh, let your heart rejoice, let your heart rejoice. Everybody say. Rejoice in the Lord. Come and rejoice in the love of the Father. 
Rejoice in the love of the Father. Rejoice in the love of the Father. Rejoice in the love of the Father. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Can you describe it? I want you to sing it. A love that is indescribable. How can I explain? A love that's unexplainable. Jesus is alive. We are excited this morning. We are excited. Hallelujah. Come on. I don't want to force anybody to dance today. In the presence of the Lord, there is what? Fullness of joy. It's everywhere. Now depends on you to take it. So if you're in his presence, there is joy available for you. So take it. Take it. Okay? Let's do it.
of sin is broken. We are perfectly, but if you're perfectly, the Son of God is the Son of God.
be silent when your God is alive. Hey! I won't be silent, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I won't be silent, my God is alive. How could I keep it? I won't be silent, I will be silent, my God is alive. How could I keep it? I won't be silent, I won't be silent, my God is alive. assurance in the death of Jesus we have so much assurance in the restoration of our Lord thank you Jesus we are called the children of God because Christ died and rose again and we're being adopted into the kingdom as children of God and then because he leaves we can face tomorrow because he leaves We can do anything. We can be anything. Because we have Jesus. Can you worship the Father this morning? Can you thank him for the assurance that you have in him? Can you thank him for the hope you have in him? Can you thank him being counted as children of God? 
Can you thank him? Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. Because it leaves. Oh, I can face tomorrow. Because it leaves. Oh, fairy. Because I know He holds my future And my life is one I live in trust Because He lives Because He lives Oh, I can face tomorrow. If you can sing it along, come on. Because it is. Oh, faith is done. Because I know. He owns my future. And life is worth a living just because he lives, because he lives, because he lives. How oh, I can face tomorrow? Yes, because he lives. Oh, my fairy. Because I know Do anything in Christ say and life is war and live it just because it said life is war and life is war and live it just because let's sing it one more time so because it lives because it I can face the more because healing But the blood of Jesus What can make me whole again? Can you say, can you say nothing? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Come and shout it out, say the blood this morning that, that makes me white I said no other fault I know no other fault I said nothing but the blood of Jesus 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Say, oh, oh, precious is the Lord that makes me white as snow. we thank you we appreciate you for the sacrifice for accepting to go to that cross 
that journey that journey of death that journey of humiliation that journey of pain of agony that journey of embarrassment of rejection that journey oh god that journey of difficulties of of burdens you took it upon yourself for our sake you went to the cross you endured the cross and you despised the shame you died for me you died for every one of us jesus and this morning we have come here to celebrate your resurrection because we believe we know that you are alive it doesn't matter what the people are saying out there we know you are alive jesus you are alive in us you are alive in our lives you are alive in this place you are alive in our family jesus you are alive we prophesy the life of Jesus upon every situation, over every home, over every nations of the world, over every community, over every church, over every family. We prophesy that Jesus indeed is a life and the life, the power of resurrection manifests in our lives even now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please be seated in God's presence. Let us clap for the choir. Let us clap for the choir and the band. Let us clap for them. Let us clap for them. Hallelujah for taking us into the very presence of God. Amen and amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to everyone. I know back in Africa, Easter Sunday like this is not just coming to church. There are a lot of goodies that happens on Easter Sunday. A lot of cooking and bringing to church and so many celebrations that goes with it. But now, here, over here, we are always very busy, busy, so we don't have time for all of that. But um, it's always good for us to share the love of Christ amongst ourselves, even with physical things, to demonstrate and to show that indeed that day was a joyous day. That resurrection morning was a joyous day. You know, resurrection signifies joy. When something comes alive, you know, it provokes joy. The joy that was missing, you know, for so many years, thousands of years in people's lives. When Jesus came alive, joy was resurrected. Joy, you know, was given birth to. If you are going through any situation that is void of joy right now, you are void of joy, I want you to believe that because Jesus rose on that day, this day signified the day that Jesus resurrected, joy has come in the name of Jesus. The joy that knows no boundary, that knows no end, the joy that is inexhaustible, you cannot steal that joy. Once that joy is in you, it flows all over your life. It affects everything, every aspect of your life. May that joy continue to be your portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28 verse number 1, it says that after the Sabbath, you know, um, after the Sabbath, as dawn was breaking on the first day of the week, I we all know that even in the, in the Hebrew calendar, the first day of the week is when? Sunday is the first day of the week. So it's recorded here. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb where Jesus Christ was buried. Um, as you all know that Jesus Christ was buried in a tomb, but they did something extra. They didn't just bury him in a tomb. You know, all these Pharisees, they are so bad. <laughs> they went and get a very mighty stone and hired men, paid them money, to make sure that that stone was used in covering the, the entrance to the tomb of Jesus. No other tomb was covered, just that of Jesus. So the, the mighty stone was used to cover the tomb of Jesus. And, um, and not just that, they also hired soldiers to stay guard, you know, to make sure no one comes around to move the stone away. You know, 
is as bad as that. They wanted him dead and dead, that even his body will not be taken away, you know, as a dead body. But unknown to them that even Jesus Christ himself does not even need stone to be rolled away. He never needed the stone to be rolled away. He resurrected, he came out. The stone was not rolled away because he needed that stone to be rolled away by the angels for him to walk out. No. Jesus can come out of anywhere. It doesn't matter. You cannot cage him. You cannot, you cannot imprison him. And that is the reason why you and I, nobody can hold you bondage. Because Jesus has set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to just go on to see that. And you know, they came to see the tomb. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven. And came and rolled back the stone from the door. And sat on it. Now, imagine mighty men. Multiple people were hired, so they must be like hefty men, paid to put that stone on that tomb. But one angel just rolled away the stone, you know, with ease and sat on it. And the question is, why did the angels have to sit on the stone? Why does he have to sit, sit on the stone? Because the weight of the angel on that stone, nobody, nothing can move that stone away. And the Bible never said that the angel came down from the stone. As we speak today, the stone is still rolled away. It's not moved from where it was rolled away. So an angel can be assigned to sit on the stone till Jesus comes back. The angel will not be hungry. He will not be tired. He will not famish. He will not be old. He will not be younger. He will just be there. He's an angel. I was assigned to sit up upon his stone. So if God sent an angel to you to take care of you, that angel will not fail in that mission. How much more you and I that are born again, for those of us that are born again, you have the Holy Spirit that is greater than even the angels. Now, he sat upon it. Now, his appearance was like lightning. And his garment as white as snow. And from, from the fear of him, the guards, see the guards that were hired, they shook and became like dead men. One angel, the guards. Imagine the guards that took Jesus from the Gethsemane all the way. Even the, one that, the ones that crucified him and, you know, played around him and mocked him, you know, spat on him and did all kinds of horrible things to him. Seeing that angel, the Bible says that they melted and they shook and they became like dead men. They froze. By the sight of the angel, the angel did nothing to them. Just seeing the angel alone, the angel alone, that alone took them out. They passed out. And what happened? And the angel responded and said to the women, he had no business with the men, with the soldiers. Because the women, Mary Magdalene, you know, by the way, this put a very special, special recognition to the women. Because the first set of people to see Jesus alive were the women. Praise the Lord. Let us clap for the women. At least, let's give that recognition. Praise, praise the Lord. It's very important that we do so because, say, and he said to the women, he didn't say he said to the men. Look at the scripture. He said it very well here. You know? Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Actually was crucified. Yes. He is not here. For he has risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. The angel showed them. Jesus Christ laid here, right? Is he here? No more. He's not here anymore. Come see where he lay. And I go quickly and tell, go quickly. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And now 
he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you, told you this. He said you will see him. There you will see him. Now, let me quickly pause a little bit. Jesus did not show himself. Jesus resurrected. But the resurrection was witnessed only by the women, not by his disciples. Not by his disciples. It is so deliberate that he had to choose this woman, Mary Magdalene. Remember, he said to her at the time when she came to break the alabaster box, very expensive, and anointed his feet and wiped his feet with, with, her, with her hair. And people were grumbling and saying, why are you allowing this to happen? He said, she's doing this for the preparation for my dead and resurrection. Jesus proclaimed that. And that same woman was the woman that saw Jesus resurrected. So, I'm saying this to every one of us to understand that Jesus chooses who he wants to show himself to. As you are seated here, if you desire to know him and to know him more, he will reveal himself to you. Not all his disciples were really, were really, really ready to see him or to understand him. But people who had a heart, a mind of who Jesus truly is. Not by the miracles that he performed. But his identity as the son of God. As the Messiah, as the one who came to rescue everyone in this world. He shows himself to such people. Hallelujah. Remember, Peter denied Jesus, but he was forgiven. So if Peter should deny Jesus, every other disciples, they all left him. They all deserted him. But the women stayed. And they stayed till the end. Hallelujah. That is a spirit. And that is a mindset. Because... I don't want to say it's just about the gender because for others to start thinking that, okay, pastor is saying this and all that, you know. But the truth is here and the truth must be told. Hallelujah. Now, at the end of the day, even as I, I close, because I'm going to close very soon, there are some things we, we are going to do today. In verse 8, it says, and they hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy. Two things happened. The fear was not a fear of, it was not a, a fear that brings torment. It was a fear of excitement. See, when you are excited and combined with joy, with great joy, and they ran, you know, to take the word to his disciples. And as they were going to tell his disciples, suddenly Jesus met them on the way. So who were the first people to see Jesus alive? Who? Anybody? Who were the first to see Jesus alive? Ah, praise the Lord. So that is the reason why, see, when women pray, when women choose, decide to pray, they go into a different realm. A different realm. You know? Jesus met them on the way. But this wasn't the plan. The angel told them that Jesus said, just go to Galilee. You will meet me there. I will be there. But Jesus chose to show himself to these women before Galilee. He greeted them and they came to him and they were so like, they were so shocked. They held on to his feet and worshipped him. They held on to his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus Christ said to, to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brethren 
that they should go to Galilee and they will see me there. The message was given to the women. The first people to, set of people to touch Jesus first alive were the women. See, that's why the devil is a bad devil, very bad devil. So he, 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 will, he will always want to attack women in many ways. You know? Attack women in several ways. So for you to understand that when a woman decides to serve God and face God and cry out to God and, and, and fight in a place of prayer, answers come speedily. Answers come so fast and so speedily. Jesus showed himself to these women for a purpose, for a reason. I don't have the time to go on there because of, time, because of our time. And while the women were going, some of the guards appeared. One thing I want you to understand that is that the enemy will never want to give up, even when he fails. Even when you have the victory over any situation in your life, don't just stop. Keep praying. Even when it's time for you to celebrate, but you are going to combine the celebration with caution. You have to add caution to the celebration because while you are celebrating, you are known to you, the enemy is also planning something. I see it. Even the Pharisees had not given up. They knew that Jesus Christ had resurrected. But what they did was that they still went ahead and hired these soldiers. This time around, to bribe them to lie. Soldiers are not, are not meant, they are not, that is not their job. These soldiers are, are to fight battles, to arrest and to do some things and all that. But not to lie. But these soldiers were bribed, were given a huge sum of money to lie, to tell a lie. That Jesus' body was taken away by his disciples. You can imagine how foolish. It doesn't, doesn't even make sense. What would they do with his body? And you know, when the soldiers met them, the, the, soldiers, the guards appeared coming into the city. And they reported to the, the chief priest everything that had happened. And when they had met with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, say that his disciples came at night and stole him away while you were sleeping. That does not make sense. Because the authority over the soldiers, if they should hear that they were sleeping, they are dead. That is one. Then number two, you are asking them to lie that his disciples took the body of Jesus away. How did they move the stone? How did they roll the stone away? The disciples were not that strong because it were mighty men that were used to push that stone on that sepulcher, on that tomb. So for you to understand that our adversary, the devil, is going about like a roaring lion, looking for who will devour. Even when you are out of that misery, of that pain, of that situation, they will not want to give up. They will not want to give up. Even if it appears foolish, they will go that route anyway. They gave them money, bribe soldiers that fight war to lie. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that before. Maybe it happens in some places. Just tell a lie that this happened. I was sleeping. Can you imagine in, 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 an American soldier saying that I was sleeping? That's why the enemy came and does it even make sense for you to say I was sleeping? Do you sleep when you are watching? No, you don't sleep. Sometimes you take time to watch. But we all know exactly what happened. These soldiers saw the angel. And they told the elders and the Pharisees what they saw. They told them what they saw. But yet, they refused. And that is what's happening, what happening today. There are so many religious people who know that Jesus Christ indeed is alive and is Lord of all. But they refuse to believe the truth. They choose to believe in religion, in tradition of men. 
And that's why you and I we must believe in Jesus. We must focus on Jesus. We must look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. With this, I'm going to end. I want us to pay attention to this Jesus, who is alive. And Jesus being alive is very real, is real. It's not because I'm saying it. I want you to believe it. Jesus is truly alive. He's alive in this place. He's alive in your family. He's alive in you. All you need to do is to speak about the living power of Jesus. You have to open your mouth to speak. The word of God says you shall have whatsoever you say. Believe and you shall receive whatsoever you say. But you have to say it. I haven't believed. You have to speak it. Let me ask a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is alive? Really? Do you believe? Because most times the first answer and the quick answer is yes. But sometimes our behavior, our character, the way we relate with things of the world and in things of God speaks volume. Because if Jesus truly is alive in you, you will not do the things you do. If Jesus is truly alive in you, you will not be where you are not supposed to be. If Jesus is truly alive in you, you will not say the things that you say. If Jesus is truly alive in you, you will not doubt the word of God. Because the word of God is Jesus. Hallelujah. If Jesus is alive in you, you will not doubt his word. You will not doubt his word. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. He that believes in me will not walk in darkness. If you believe in Jesus, he says you will not walk in darkness. If you see yourself walking in darkness, something is wrong somewhere. If you are walking in unbelief, in doubt, in bitterness, in resentment, something is wrong somewhere. Jesus took care of all the difficulties that we are going through right now. So all we need to do is to cast our burdens upon him, for he cares for us. Sometimes when we act the way we are acting, it's like we are crucifying Jesus Christ the second time. Jesus will not go back to the cross again. He has done it, and he said, it is finished. Because he said, it is finished, every crisis in your life must come to an end. Every pain in your life must come to an end. And I want you to say to yourself that the pain and the crisis in my life must come to an end. This day should mark the end of all the challenges you are going through. You can speak to that mountain, that thing that is standing in your way of going forward in life. And I say to you that this is the power of resurrection that brought Jesus Christ out from death to life. That power will roll away that stone in your life in Jesus' mighty name. There is a quick thing we are going to do right now, even as we close. Uh, please, can you, on Friday, during, our, during the, the special night vigil, we said each person should come with a bottle of water. I don't know if you have your bottle of water, but what signifies? Water signifies life. It signifies life. It signifies the Holy Spirit. The fountain of living water. Jesus Christ said, if, if, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone is not satisfied, let him come and drink. And he says, out of your belly shall flow, shall flow rivers of living water. Amen? So, right now, this water is ordinary water, but the moment you hold on to it, you are going to pray over that water. Whatever you are desiring from God, you are going to speak into that water for the month of April. For the month of April. You are going to prophesy. You know, give to your children. You know, if you have more than what is there, you can take more and give to your children. Or you can share with your children. You are going to pray over that water yourself. You are going to speak to that water. Either in your studies, 
concerning your studies, concerning your, your business, concerning your children, concerning your health, concerning your career, concerning your ministry, your job, whatever it is you desire, I want you to speak into that water. Because something will happen. Definitely. I want you to believe. If you believe and you know that Jesus is alive, eh, he's alive. And water signifies life. You are, going to, you are going to prophesy and speak to that water. If you have it already, start praying over that water. Just speak to, speak to that water. And after you are done praying, it's no longer ordinary water. It's no longer ordinary water. It's no longer ordinary water. Just speak to that water. I'll give you some time to speak. Jesus told the people to fill the water pot with water. In John chapter 2, at the wedding of Canaan, and um, they, had, they ran out of wine, and Jesus Christ said, okay, fill the water pot with water. And after they did that, <laughs> he said, draw it out. The Bible says that the water became wine. This water will turn to life, something, something that you are trusting God for. Any delay, delay. And the instruction given is that you have to drink this water before tomorrow. Either tonight before you go to bed, you drink this water before tomorrow. Tonight, you, before you drink the water, you're going to pray again. And you drink that water as you go to bed. Make sure you do that today against tomorrow that in the month of April from the beginning to the end miracles signs and wonders will follow you you will not follow signs and wonders they will follow you your life will attract favor <laughs> your life will attract favor if you have been experiencing losses in your life no more losses Yes, but I will thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your anointing. Your anointing, oh God. Your anointing, oh God. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this water. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. This is water, oh God. Lord Jesus, manifest your power. Holy Ghost, enter into this water. Enter into this water and transform it. Lord, as this water goes into the system of your children, O oh God, let power, let power enter into them. Let every organ be, be corrected. Let every system function effectively. Everything that was dead come alive. Everything that was dead be resurrected. As this water goes all the way, it will penetrate to every part of your body, every part of your mind every part of your life it will reset everything that has been damaged by the enemy from the day you were born to this moment god will bring correction to every error that every error will be corrected in the name of jesus father we thank you every defect in your organ every defect in your body there will be correction you will come back on sunday thanksgiving to testify father we thank you so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us clap for Jesus and happy Easter again. Amen. Please, if you are writing a check, please make it payable to RCCGRA. You can give through Cash App. And we have a project going on in the house now. If God has led you to give towards the project, you can indicate our CCGRA project. You can also give cash if that's what you have on you. So let's package our tithes and offerings, thankfully. Joyfully.
knowing that we serve a living God. Fire, can you give us a danceable song, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. To, to get wealth. Thank you for our businesses. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for the, the health to be able to do the jobs and run the businesses because they all come from you. We joyfully bring our tithes and offerings this morning. We ask, Lord, that you bless and sanctify them. Let them be used to further your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And by this offering and tithes, Lord, break every yoke of lack and poverty in our lives and families and in the church of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the resurrection power of the Lord be made manifest in every area of our lives and families. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So our announcements. Bible study continues on Wednesday. It starts at 7, but there's prayer at 5 p.m. in church that goes from 5 to 7, and then the Bible study starts at 7, goes till 8.30. Then we have fasting and prayer on Thursday. 
and we'll be meeting together on the prayer line at 5.30 to pray together. Then comes the Sunday service, next week Sunday, to celebrate the new month. So God will keep us till then and beyond in Jesus' name. Do we have any new guests in our midst this morning by any chance? Anybody visiting for the first time? Okay, so if you are online, you are welcome. God bless you. May you remember this day for good in Jesus' name. So let's close, let's stand up and close in prayers. Heavenly Father, we rejoice today in the fact that Jesus is alive. Because Jesus is alive, we have hope. Because Jesus is alive, we have hope. Hope of eternity. Father, we give you glory and honor. Lord, we pray in the name that is above every other name, that every good thing in our lives and families that are dead, let them receive the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus today. Everything, every good thing that is dying, in our lives, in our families. Let them receive the life of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as we go today, may your presence continue to go with us in the name of Jesus. We go covered with your favor in the name of Jesus. Everywhere we turn this week, let us encounter your favor, favor of God and favor from man in the name of Jesus. We agree together and we declare and decree that this is our week of breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, it's our week of blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and honor. Let your name be glorified, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name.